Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I want to share with you one of my favorite questions from the spiritual teacher Byron Katie. And one of the questions she asks all the time is, who would you be without your story? Now, she usually asks it in the context of what she calls the work. So if you're not familiar with the work, it's basically four questions and a turnaround. So Katie encourages people to write down a a thought a belief, something that they think is true about life. Well, people are blank. I am blank. This is blank. And then to question that story, to question that idea, to question that thought, well, is it true? Can you really know that it's true? How do you feel? How do you react when you think that thought? And then who would you be without that thought? Who would you be without that story. And then the work goes on to to turn it around. Well, what I find interesting about the work is that the liberation that people experience when they do it is they begin to see that they are not their story. They are not their thoughts. And they open up to the question, well, if I'm not my thoughts, who am I? What am I? But where I've seen people get stuck doing the work is instead of staying with that question, well, if I'm not my thoughts, if my thoughts are almost arbitrary and always turn out to be not true or just not completely true, maybe true sometimes, not true other times, what's behind that? Who's the one thinking all these thoughts? But instead, what happens is people start collecting more thoughts and go, ooh, let me do this one, let me do this one. And sometimes I'll even carry around huge notebooks filled with thoughts to do the work on. Now, I spent about a year and a half doing the work on a daily basis, and it eventually dawned on me, oh, if every single time I do this, I come to the same conclusion, maybe I don't need to do it. Maybe I can just stay with the question I'm always left with. Who would I be without my story? Now, here's here's the thing. It's very easy to answer the question. So I might say, well, without my story, I am love. Without my story, I am God. Without my story, I am oneness. Without my story, I am spirit. Without my story, I am pure consciousness. Now, I suspect all of those descriptions are true, right? I've read enough spiritual texts to suggest that that is who we are at core. That is our true nature. But the thing about our true nature is knowing it conceptually stops us often from experiencing it in our being from having an actual honest-to-God experience of yourself as God, of having an actual filled-with-spirit experience of yourself as spirit, of being fully conscious of yourself as consciousness. So for me, what I find, the longer I sit in the question without trying to force an answer, what comes aren't words, but a feeling. And it's a feeling of quiet. It's a feeling of expansiveness, of spaciousness. It's a feeling of stillness. It's it's a feeling that I used to associate with meditating. And in fact, it is the state of meditation. But it doesn't take a practice to be in the state of meditation because the state of meditation is our natural state. And when we're willing to simply hang out in that space, it does something for us. It does something to us. It's like bathing in 
the most incredible healing balm. It's like hanging out in a hyperbaric chamber. If you've ever been in a hyperbaric chamber, maybe they're used a lot for injury recovery. They're used a lot for athletes to train because essentially it's this massively oxygen-rich environment. And when you're in it, the, the oxygen gets into your bloodstream and hyperoxygenates your blood, which is meant to have all sorts of healing properties to accelerate healing. But also for athletes, it temporarily makes you smarter and sharper and stronger. And so a lot of athletes will sleep in a hyperbaric tent or chamber before the big game or the big match. Well, in a way, this space of meditation is a hyperbaric chamber for the soul. It's good for whatever ails you. And because it is our nature, it is who we are without our story, it is what is always present, whether we're present to it or not. Unlike the physical chamber, which only works when you're in it, and then you've got to kind of run back into it because the, the effects wear off, it comes with us wherever we go. It's possible to be in the hyperbaric chamber of meditation, in the hyperbaric chamber of your true nature, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, wherever you are. And as you spend more of your time in that feeling, in that quiet, in that stillness, even if it's chaos all around you, the more you have apparent superpowers, the more you're able to stay in the calm in the midst of chaos, the more you're able to be at your best when you need to be at your best most, and the more you're able to enjoy your life regardless of what's going on around you. So the question that I kind of want to encourage you to take away from today is the question in the title. Who would you be without your story. And don't stop at your verbal answers. Don't stop at whatever words come to mind. Stay with the question. And my experience is that the more you ask it sincerely with a sincere desire to know the answer, not to confirm what I said was the answer or what you think you know is the answer, the more you experience this feeling, this stillness, this quiet, this hyperbaric chamber of the soul. Have fun, learn heaps, and I'll speak with you soon.